I'm gonna try to recreate the How to Train Your Dragon test drive queue. Let's see how much we can do in 20 minutes, 30 minutes maybe. Let's go. This queue. So today I'm trying a new position, which is laptop here. So a couple of videos ago, I talked about my studio. Last video, I talked about my template. And a few videos ago, I talked about my mouse configuration. You can see here how I've got a series of buttons and trigger a series of things here. I also found that because I spend a lot of hours in front of this computer, I move very fast using the trackpad. So this is a test. Let's see how it goes. You listen back to these things. You notice how many things are actually out of time and work better than if they were actually in time. Like for example, you can see how the brass comes in, but the peak point of that brass comes in a little late, comes like here. Okay, we're gonna do this part here. All right, so if we just had 10 minutes or less, because it took me 15 to prepare. What would I do? So obviously the most obvious thing are the horns, right? The horn section, something like this. Let's uh, take a listen to this. Let's see, I think it's legato here. So I always talk about the most important thing is the performance, how you perform the instrument. It's important, the sound quality of your sample library, of course, 100%, but the most important thing is how you perform. It's like you can have the best instrument in the world and if you don't know how to perform it, then it's gonna sound like crap. And that's what separates, let's say, like a professional orchestra than a, an amateur orchestra or a high school orchestra. So what we're trying to do here is get this right. And I'm gonna try and copy the feel of this. So the first one enters like the, the second one has the weight. Then let's compare with what we've written. See, it's not the same. Let's re record this again. Okay, one thing that's weird is uh, usually when I've got the keyboard here, I've got this closer to me. So now it's farther away. That's weird. And believe it or not, it makes a big difference because, you know, moving this from here to here, it's easier than from here to here. Yeah, I think this works much better. I have a problem here. There is a little bit of separation between these two notes in the recording. So it's da, da, da. See, da, da, da. Yes. So what else we've got? We've got the brass chorale. I'm gonna grab the trombones and sample. Yeah, at this range. Maybe we can bring the tuba. Space to breathe here for the dum bum. So space to breathe here. Space to breathe. Space to breathe sounds way more natural. We tend to connect all the notes with samples, but real instruments would need time to breathe. <laughs> Free, free. All right, let's keep going. What else we've got? Strings coming in towards the end here. here. I'm gonna do that for sure. I'm moving so much slower. You see how when uh, you've got things sitting in a different place, the muscle memory makes it so much hard. It just slows you down. Then 
Dynamic. Let's see how it sounds. Let's record the double bass line of this. Like See how it sounds it all together. All together. Alright, so first part is the most important part. We've got the melody, we've got the background. Now we're gonna record the ear candy and then all the percussion. Let's make this sound big. All right, now I didn't have enough time this morning, so gonna finish now. Record, 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 record. Let's go. Cubase. Yes, I'm recording 12 videos in a row. And let's go. The laptop here for now. I'm gonna move it here, this guy here. All right, let's move on. So let's take a listen and let's make an active exercise to truly try and listen. What instruments do we hear? We're gonna start with the ones that are the most important. So we've got now the melody with the horns, the most important one, then we've got the background. And now let's, let's take a listen. So we've got the cymbal roll, right? Shh. The big percussion, doom, doom, doom. Then we've got the shaky, shak, shak, shak. We've got these three things. If we listen to the background, I think the double bass, it's slightly louder than it would sound in a real orchestra, meaning like the low instrument. So the double bass is the two bass, the contrabassoons, the rhodium, right? This is this part here, I'm talking about. Maybe they have like a sub synth or like a subtle electric bass. Let's continue. I think it's something like this. Compress but like this just a tad like this. You're gonna copy. Now is when we start positioning this instrument. The horns sound a little bit more to the left. Let's open the horns just for a second. By the way, the first note needs a little bit more. And I know that we said that it starts without that much weight, but it needs a little bit more at the beginning. Let's see. A little bit less. That shaker need to bring it down a little bit. The one on the right. Let's compare. Needs a lot more of reverb. It's a little bit of that. And also, we're gonna go here, 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 medium. Great. Let's do that Simba roll. Shh. So a little bit over the right side. One of the things that makes this second moment so powerful. What we were talking about earlier, the bass, it's not as solid and powerful before. We've got these kind of like swells. And at the end of the swell, we hear a little bit more of that bass, but then in this new section, the bass stays solid the whole time and comes in from the kind of like the downbeat and stays there, see? And 
there's definitely my opinion a little bit of synth bass going on to add that solid dance if that makes sense that confession since i switched to mac i still don't have zebra installed i don't even have Omnisphere and Trillion, so I don't have my scenic or electric bases. So see if I do something or just leave it there. Maybe I'll add a sub bump. But for now, let's record that kind of like bigger percussion hit. So we've got these guys here. Can we do something like damage? Then we've got kind of like a rim on the left side. Sounds like this, but I would have to move this. This guy needs to sound. Yeah, okay, so let's record these hits. Two hits here, another one here. Subtle one here, downbeat. Then pam pam. So if you listen to the original and now to what we've got now Ours still sounds like crap mm -hmm. compared to... But if you look at the elements, it's like, what's missing? And I'll explain what's missing. The three most important elements in music is going to be direction, background, movement. Five musical layers, I like to call. So direction, general, it's going to be the melody. Background is the background. Oh shit, huh? Movement is, you know, the moving forward force that moves the music forward. And then we've got bass and Eric Handy. If we look here, basically what's going on, the two most important here is, is the melody, it's the direction, and then the background plus bass. So the two main elements is the melody on the left side with the horns. And then super important, super solid is the bass. That's kind of like center left with the double bass, the bassoons, the contrabassoons, the tuba and all that, and maybe a synth bass. But when we go back to our thing, it sounds like, ah! got two things that are different here. I think the background needs to go down a little bit and the bass has to go up a little bit, but see how important the way we perform things or the way we balance things makes such a big difference because there are not that many more elements. We have to perfect a little bit the percussive side of things, but there's not much more going on here. And so, you know, begs the questions like how come it sounds so different and how simplicity sounds so big? And this is the key of this soundtrack, simplicity. But also, and here's the kicker here's what makes it so special and so hard at the same time balance and performance is what makes it sound so awesome because these three elements out of balance sound meh and when you nail the balance and the performance it sounds so freaking awesome So that's what we're gonna be working on. So gonna make this bass a little bit more solid. So we're gonna add the bassoons and the contrabassoons to add a little bit of definition to the bass line. And I'm also going to double the double bass with the cellos up an octave. So here we go with the bassoons. Contrabassoon. Cellos. And now I think I'm gonna re record the horns. Way better. Maybe a little bit of soup bomb. how quantizing it's not the right thing to do these two notes need to go a little bit later for them to some natural the real thing 
a little bit late because it's what musicians do, right? They subconsciously or automatically, intuitively at the end of a phrase, even though they've got the click here when they are recording, they'll micro retardando the phrase for it to sound natural because it's the end of a phrase and then it's start over. That's what we've got to do with the samples as well. So when we record, sometimes we don't nail it or we quantize and we shouldn't quantize 100%. So in this case, for example, it's, it shows proof that not playing on time is going to make it sound actually more natural, more musical. <laughs> So there are certain things that still don't work. That mix sounds a little bit less mid-rangey. If got a little bit too much of mid, so the strings and trombones have to bring down the background material a little bit down. There are a few more things. It seems like there's kind of like a high tam tam instrument percussion. This thing here. That fills up like the mid-high range in the register and it kind of like the mid-left area that I don't have in my mix. It's interesting. Continue on this tomorrow. I need a break. All right, I was not finding the sound and I found the solution. Cariño, ¿me puedes pasar? That's not happening. So the solution is the screen was too small. Now with this screen, sounds much better. Just that. Oh well, can I, for consistency. <laughs> it has to look the same. Cool. Awesome. So that's the right place. Yeah, sure. Turns out the problem with the sound or the reason why it was not matching exactly. Take a listen to this. Did you catch it? I actually cut the original soundtrack and the space in the middle was the mock-up. Maybe some of you are already like, ah. But if I tricked you and if you didn't hear the difference, don't say, ah, I hear the difference. No. So first, the first thing that I did is I switched the screen because at the beginning of the video... Because it took me you just love doing those things and that's it. That's the real reason. I had to say that, sorry. I started this video with this computer here. Didn't like it. Then I switched the original position. I'm trying the screen. This is, if you remember, if you've been following me for a while, this is a screen that I used a couple of years ago. It's nice to have it back. While I was testing the screen, I recorded a few things behind the scenes that I didn't show. These are the things that made the difference that make the sound sound like this. So three things. First, I added the tam tam that we were talking about. I'm gonna solo it. Very low in the mix, in a real context, would sound way louder. But because this is a mock-up or because we can mix, and I'm sure I'm right if I would say that in the real recording, they actually recorded the Tam Tam separately or just sampled Tam Tam and they brought it down quite a bit because at this loudness, it would sound much louder in a real context. So that's the first thing, the Tam Tam. The second thing, the top of the mix percussion that I recorded, I replaced it with a shimmer shake strike. Sounds more natural to me. It's a little wider cut, so it makes it a little bit better. And that's pretty much it. I perfected a little bit the low instruments that were a little bit loose when I recorded them. And I cut a little bit of these low percussions. I cut a little bit of the low end here, see, without. So these are these three here that get rid of that muddiness and also I cut a little bit for the boominess. which we don't need in the percussion. And the last thing that I did is I got rid of a little bit of the air. This was at 18, I brought it down. And this was at 28, I brought it up at 37. And I feel that it matches much better the color. If you see this, the color of the original sound for the orchestral side of things, not for the percussive side of things, it matches much better.
And the last, last thing that I did is it felt a little bit dry, so I added a 10% of reverb. In this case, I used this uh, Bahala room and just attached 10% reverb because this section here, my mockup felt a little bit dry. So one more time. One thing that I wanted to mention that I didn't talk about is I also perfect a little bit the melody and I want to spend a lot of time here but let me just real quick talk about three things. Number one, see the legatos and non legato. So for example, these two notes are legato. And that's so important. If we go back to the original. See how da. This first note is a little bit shorter and these things make a big difference. And then back to this one. Also some notes are late, see that these notes are a little bit late. And it helps with the musicality, it truly helps. So what I found is that usually we will quantize things. I usually quantize at like 60%, like the rhythms and the moving forward elements generally are more hardly quantized. The things that are the loosest or the more loose are generally melodies and things like this. When playing to click and when we're doing a mock-up, we're always playing to click. So we've got the legatos and non-legatos that make a big difference. Then we've got the notes that are a little bit late and also making notes more and less powerful when they need to be. So for example, this note. See it has less power, I brought down the modulation to make it a little bit softer. So it kind of like follows the melodic curve, got the first melodic curve and the second melodic curve. It starts soft and goes louder and goes down again, it starts soft, goes louder and goes down again. And we can see it here. All right, one last time. So what have we learned? So it's very simple. There's melody background movement or the moving forward element, the percussion. But if the balance is not right, it doesn't work. It feels so off when you are listening to the original sound and then you go back to your mock-up and then back to the original sound. It's like, why? doesn't sound the same. And it's generally not the mix, it's not the, re it's the balance. Or another thing that I did that I didn't mention is like I brought down all the background elements, the trombones and the strings by three dBs and a half, something like this, so very subtle, but that allowed the, for the melody to stand out a little bit more. And then I brought up the bass a little bit for it to balance with the, with the melody. I closed a few elements, the horns were showing a little bit too wide, closed them a little bit, but that's that's about it. So arguably not much mixing here going on, just the sound, out of the box, working with a laptop, replicating the sound of a very expensive recording. It's not the exact, but it's very close. This video is long enough. If you got here, you're awesome. Comment down below with the hashtag got till the end. Thanks, Mark. And if you want to go the extra mile and learn all these things, I left a link down below with free resources that you can download. You can get access for free. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.